Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be diving into the uh, difference between OpenAI API versus the OpenAI Assistant API. Now, whether you're a developer, a tech enthusiast, or just curious about AI, this video will provide you with a clear understanding of these powerful tools. Now, before I get started, let me tell you a quick story how I got started with the OpenAI Assistant API. When I was uh, working with the Chat Completion API, it was very easy. I just needed to send a request to the OpenAI servers and get a response back just using one of their APIs, whether it's chat completion, uh, audio generation, or image generation, etc. Now, with the OpenAI Assistant API, it allows you to use multiple tools along with the Assistant so that you can send a request and get a response back. But the only caveat is that you have to configure the Assistant on the back end, meaning that you have to put in your custom tools, your vector database, you have to put in your prompt instructions, as well as uh, configure how the threads are going to be stored. So you have to do all these things, so you have to understand how all the APIs work, and then create a natural web application for yourself so you can send a request to your API and get the response back. So that requires you to understand how the OpenAI Assistant API works. Also, before I dive in, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time I drop video on this topic. Also, make sure you share with your friends who are also interested to learn about creating AI agents or working with OpenAI's set of tools uh, or learning Python in general. This set of skills are becoming increasingly important for you to learn as the AI development skill gap widens. Now, let's jump into the video. So as you know, OpenAI first introduced this API to the public in June 2020. This API provides developer access to OpenAI's powerful language models. Initially, it was GPT-3 enabling a wide range of applications such as natural language understanding, content generation, and more. Now, if you look at the OpenAI documentation and you'll notice under endpoints and before assistance, all these are part of the suite of OpenAI API tools. After its launch, OpenAI continued to improve the API, including fine-tuning capabilities, introduce new features to enhance its usability and performance. You'll notice right here we have also have the assistance. So the concept of OpenAI Assistant API evolved from the need to create more sophisticated and interactive AI systems. OpenAI recognized that while single-turn conversations like those facilitated by the original API were powerful, there were growing demand for multi-turn, context-aware conversations. So that means it required something like a knowledge-based vector database, memory, and thread management. We're going to talk more about this in a little bit. Before we jump into understanding OpenAI Assistant API, let's try to understand the OpenAI's original API. And it's all about harnessing AI for various specific tasks. Think of it as your go-to tool for individual AI needs like generating text, creating images, or transcribing audio. Here are some of the key APIs that you can use, which is the chat completion, then you have the uh, image generation than the speech generation APIs. It's generally very simple and it requires single API calls for specific tasks. You probably heard about AI automation agencies that were sprouting up last year and this was due to the availability of the OpenAI API. Now, If you have a specific business process, you can now think of adding that API into that specific process, whether as an input or output, etc., to enhance your business process with AI functionalities. For example, if part of your business requires you to create copy or content to generate input, then you can plug in that API in between your business process to gather some input from you and then create an output, which could be an article or a blog or content, etc., and then enhance your business process by doing so. Now let's shift our focus to the OpenAI Assistant API. This API is designed for more complex interactive applications. It's like having a virtual assistant that can manage multi-turn conversations and remember context. Now, if you work with the ChatGPT interface, then you'll understand what I mean because it incorporates something called memory and also includes context from documents as well as images and audio that you provided to give you a more relevant response. 
If you build custom GPTs using the ChatGPT interface, using your own knowledge base, and also your own prompt, you'll understand the uh, benefits of having a more personalized and custom agent for your needs. Now, the OpenAI Assistant API unlocks more potential for your GPTs uh, or your assistants by having context-aware interactions. The Assistant API also allows you to create advanced conversational agents or AI agents with multi-turn interactions, memory and custom tool integrations. So you can use this in your business process management. You can use it as technical support assistance. You can also add integrations to it like WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. So I personally like to create uh, reminders and scheduled meetings through talking to the assistant using WhatsApp. I, I think that's the easiest way to communicate with your assistant. And uh, I have videos on my YouTube that will help you create your own assistant and add a WhatsApp integration. Now let's walk through an example to illustrate the difference. Imagine you're developing a customer support chatbot for a business. Now with the OpenAI API, you can use the text completion endpoint uh, to create a response for customer queries. It's quick and efficient for generating individual responses. However, with the OpenAI Assistant API, you can build more sophisticated chatbot that not only responds to queries, but also remembers previous interactions, pull information from a knowledge base, and handle follow-up questions seamlessly. You can also attach custom tools, for example, sending emails or integrating to WhatsApp or um, you know, doing all kinds of other tasks like scheduling reminders, etc. This unlocks the full potential of your assistant. If you're using GPTs, then it will unlock the full potential of your GPTs and it's no longer restrained to the chat GPT interface. When it comes to integration complexity, the OpenAI API is generally simple to use. You may use single API calls for specific tasks. In contrast, the OpenAI Assistant API requires coordinating multiple endpoints and managing context, which can be more challenging and offers greater functionalities. For example, with the Assistant endpoint, you can create your Assistant, you can modify the Assistant, you can add specific knowledge bases to the Assistant. With the thread endpoint, you can create a thread. Thread, as you know, is a collection of messages. And every time you send a message to the assistant, you will initiate something called a run. So you'd have to do that through the run endpoint and then retrieve the results from the run. You also have to create your own vector store and attach files to it, whether it's documents or images, so that the assistant can reference those when it's responding to you okay so all these things are important and that is why you need to understand how these apis work and how you can coordinate them together so you can create an api for yourself and communicate with that i have videos in my channel that will help you create your own api and coordinate all these functionalities together in one place conclusion both apis offer powerful tools for leveraging ai but they serve different purposes the OpenAI api is great for specific tasks and simple integrations while the OpenAI assistant api is designed for creating advanced interactive assistance now if you want to learn how you can create your own ai agents and add multimodal capabilities like voice image text etc then I'd recommend you start here in my school community, Custom GPT AAA. I'm going to provide the link in the description. After you click the link in the description, you'll be taken to my school community where you'll find a lot of resources waiting for you to learn Python, to learn OpenAI assistance, as well as cheat sheets like this. You're going to find this in the resource hub where uh, it'll break down the difference between OpenAI API and the OpenAI Assistant API so you will no longer have any confusion using these APIs. And you can start using that today, start creating your agents, start incorporating these APIs and uh, get ahead of the curve. As you know, the GPT-5 tsunami is coming and the AI skill gap is widening. So the faster you start learning these technologies, the faster you can innovate in this space and start creating agents for your business as well as for yourself so you can ride the tsunami and break through the matrix break through the limiting beliefs start incorporating ai into your business make the bots do the work for you if you found value in this video make sure you like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time i come online 
and uh, drop a new video. GPT Pioneers, let's go.